Today, we'll be taking a look at the ROG NUC 970 Mini Gaming PC by ASUS. Specifically, I have with me the NUC 14 SRK model, which is powered by Intel's high-end Core Ultra 9 185H mobile processor, marking ASUS's first gaming-oriented NUC PC release since taking over the NUC mantle from Intel, we'll take a look at the specs of this mini PC, unbox it, and run some benchmarks to see how it performs. Let's get started. Starting with the packaging, we see that ASUS has gone for the usual black and red colorway that has come to be associated with the ROG brand, and over on the rear, we get a summary of the specifications of the ROG NUC 970 Mini PC. Removing the outer sleeve, we get a glimpse of the inner box which feels like it's made out of pretty premium materials. Here's the specs of the review unit that I was sent for this video. ASUS has equipped the ROG NUC 970 model with the top-of-the-line Intel Core Ultra 9 185H mobile processor, which is a 16-core part with 6 P-cores, 8 E-cores, and 2 low-power efficient cores. It has a maximum turbo frequency of 5.1GHz and comes with integrated Intel Arc graphics. The PC also comes with NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 4070 mobile GPU with 8GB of VRAM. We've got two 16GB sticks of DDR5-5600 RAMs for a total of 32GB of RAM, and storage-wise, the NUC 970 has a 1TB SSD pre-installed. It's great to note that the mini PC comes with a Thunderbolt 4 port, and we do also get 2.5 Gigabit Ethernet and Intel Killer Wi-Fi 6E as standard. And with that, let's take a look at the contents of the box. In terms of accessories, we get a 330 watt power brick with corresponding power cord, spare logo masks for the PC's illuminated ROG motif, a warranty information leaflet, regulatory information leaflets, an Intel Core Ultra 9 case badge, as well as a stand that allows you to position the PC vertically instead of having it lying horizontally on your desk. The said stand is made of both metal and plastic and seems pretty solidly built. Onto the ROG NUC 970. It's constructed entirely of matte black plastic, where on the top side, we get an illuminated ROG motif with RGB lighting effects that can be configured via the ASUS Armory Crate software. As can be seen, we get ventilation openings on all sides of the NUC. Over on the bottom of the NUC, we can see the two blower-style coolers that ASUS has employed for the purposes of heat dissipation. In terms of front I.O., we get a SD 8.0 card slot, two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A ports, as well as a 3.5mm audio combo jack. As for the rear I.O., the ROG NUC 970 comes with two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A ports, two USB 2.0 Type-A ports, a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, as well as a Thunderbolt 4 port that supports the DisplayPort 2.1 standard via the PC's integrated Intel Arc graphics and fast charging capabilities. Moving on, we get a HDMI 2.1 FRL port and two DisplayPort 1.4A ports. These three ports are associated with the NUC 970's discrete NVIDIA RTX 4070 mobile GPU. To round things off, we get a port for the power adapter as well as a Kensington lock slot. With that, let's have a look at the insides of this mini PC. Gaining access to the insides of the NUC 970 involves pressing down on this latch right here and sliding off the top lid like so. You then have to undo a screw on the rear I.O. area of the NUC 970 before sliding out the bottom assembly and disconnecting a single cable for service access. Here, we can see the three PCIe 4.0 X4 M.2 slots, of which this slot here is populated by the pre-installed Samsung 1TB NVMe SSD that comes with the NUC 970. We do also get the two DDR5 SODIMM slots 
which are pre-populated with two 16GB DDR5-5600 Samsung Sodium modules for a total of 32GB of RAM. As of the time of publishing this review, the ROG NUC 970 supports a maximum of 64GB of RAM. It's great to see that the CMOS battery is easily accessible too, where it's located in this corner right here. And with that, here's a recap on the specs of the ROG NUC 970, where it's pretty much a PC that's ready to go out of the box with Windows 11 Home pre-installed. It's worth noting that ASUS has included three power profiles with the NUC 970, Silent, Performance and Turbo. The said power modes can be configured either within the BIOS or via the pre-installed Armory Crate software. For the purposes of testing the NUC 970, I'll be running all tests on the default performance power profile. To put this setup through its paces, I'll first be running Cinebench R23 to test the performance of the Core Ultra 9 185H processor. Thereafter, to get a sensing of gaming performance, I'll be running the in-game benchmark tests of Cyberpunk 2077, F1 23, as well as Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Finally, I'll also be running Crystal Disk Mark to check on the performance of the Samsung NVMe SSD that comes included with the NUC 970. With that, let's get started. The following thermal and power draw results were obtained via Hardware Info 64's sensor readout while running F123's in-game benchmark on the performance power mode. Some observations here, as can be seen from the results, the Core Ultra 9 185H processor ran pretty toasty with an average CPU package temperature of 94.5 degrees Celsius where it exceeded 100 degrees Celsius several times and even hit a maximum temperature of 103 degrees Celsius during benchmarking. The GeForce RTX 4070 mobile GPU on the other hand ran comparatively cooler with an average GPU temperature of 72.2 degrees Celsius and an average GPU hotspot temperature of 81.4 degrees Celsius, which isn't a bad showing.
A brief note on acoustics. I found the fan noise of the NUC 970 to be acceptable while under load. To my ears, I couldn't discern the difference in fan noise levels while on the silence and performance modes under load, while the turbo mode yielded slightly more fan noise than the prior two power modes. In conclusion, the ASUS ROG NUC 970 is a premium mini PC offering that is targeted at gamers looking for a small form factor PC that can game at good frame rates on most modern titles at perhaps the 1440p resolution. It feels well built and comes with a good assortment of connectivity and I.O. options. I do wish, however, that the processor cooler performance could have been better as under load, the Core Ultra 9 185H processor ran at temperatures between 80 to more than 100 degrees Celsius, as you might have observed from the on-screen Hardware Info 64 sensor readouts found in the Gaming Benchmark section of this video review. With that, thank you so much for watching, do like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you guys around the next time.